Uh, so road ranger gearboxes manufactured by Eaton Fuller, you'll find in a lot of trucks, in particular American trucks and Asian trucks, so uh, Kenworth, Mack, Freightliner, also UD, uh, Fuso or Mitsubishi, uh, Isuzu, they are quite often have road ranger gearboxes, but usually in the larger trucks, so the prime movers, the semi-trailers. Uh, so this truck we're in today, it's got a 13 ski speed uh, uh, road ranger Eaton Fuller. And this is the pattern we've got here. As you'll see, uh, over this area here is the re reverse area, and this is also the low, low area, which uh, the low is, is, is a really slow crawling gear, and it's used when you're off-road and things like that. These are the gears in this H pattern, are the ones that you use all the time. Uh, and the way they're positioned here, in this, this truck here, we've got one, two, three, four. And after we get there, we then use this range selector at the front here. That's the, this button here. When it's in the up position, you can then uh, locate these gears here, five, six, seven, eight. So that's the pattern in this truck, the 13 speed. Uh, Eaton Fuller also make gearboxes 18 speed, 15 speed, 10 speeds. They also make uh, automatic gearboxes as well. Uh, so today I'm gonna talk about more so the shifting pattern, how to double the clutch uh, and change gears in the 13 speed Road Ranger gearbox. Yeah, just demonstrate the double and the clutch going up the gears while the engine's off, just so you can, I can explain more about the uh, footwork and the gear stick. So I'm in gear at the moment, so the action for going up the gears is clutch to neutral, clutch to gear. Clutch to neutral, clutch to gear. Clutch to neutral, clutch to gear. Um, yeah, so that's the that's what the footwork does. Uh, when you're going down a gear, the only difference it, it's it's the same kind of technique, but the only difference is we need to give it a rev in neutral. So the action for going down the gears is clutch to neutral, give it a rev, clutch to gear. Do that again, clutch to neutral, rev, clutch to gear. Yeah, and this is what it looks when we looks like when we're actually doing it. Okay, I'm about to go up the gear. So it's clutch to neutral, clutch to gear. Now notice with the hand action, you really do kind of knock it in and knock it out. We're not gently sliding the gears, but it's a kind of a pop it out, pop it in action, is what the truck and the gearbox actually likes. Uh, so the other things that are important, before the gear change, speeding the truck up, before you make that clutch to neutral, clutch to gear. Okay, a couple of other things that are handy when you're going up the gears is before you uh, release the gear into neutral, it's actually preloaded or take the slack out of the gear stick. Because the benefit of that is, is when you're applying your accelerator right now and you're building the speed up, building the engine up, when you release that accelerator, the gear should just pop out nicely, really easily. So if you've got that little bit of pressure on the gear stick, you can then just as you release the accelerator, release the power, it just drops out of gear and you can drop in the gear, the next gear. Now, this is a very important stage when people are changing gears without the clutch, or it's commonly referred to as floating the gears. Just take off again. So, I'm in first, take the slack out of the gear stick, build the pressure up, and release the gear as the power is dying down. Now it's really important that you get the timing right. If you do the gear change too fast, this is what's going to happen. Get yeah, a bit of a grind, that's too fast. If you do the gear change too slow, out, you missed your chance. So timing is essential. And for this truck right here, what it likes best is out, in, that kind of sequence. going to demonstrate now going down the gears. Um, the action is slow the truck down, get the engine speed down or get the truck speed down, pop it in neutral, so clutch to neutral, give it a rev, then clutch to gear. Now there's no great rush in timing. The only time you've got to get right is when you give it the rev, clutch and gear follows. Just take this corner up, and then we'll go down a few.
Okay, so the sequence is clutch to neutral, give it a rev, clutch to gear. And notice I've kind of pushed the gear in and knocked the gear in. We don't slide the gear in. So I'll show you what I mean. Rev, clutch and punch the gear in. So you really kind of knock to neutral, rev, knock to gear. So when you give it that rev, we actually give it a rev, then the gear goes in. So we're not actually shoving the gear in while we're revving. We let the rev go or let the rev, rev breathe do its job, then we punch the gear in. So it's a rev, clutch and gear. Okay, I'll go up the gears again. Clutch to neutral, clutch to gear. Clutch to neutral, clutch to gear. To neutral, to gear. Okay, going down the gears. Slow the truck down to the right speed. Pop it to neutral, give it a rev, pop it into gear. Now, one of the key elements here is matching your rev with the truck speed. Now, I'll show you a couple of different uh, variations. First and foremost, if you've got your engine down low or your truck speed low, so if we're looking at the TACO, I've got the TACO down to about five, 500 RPMs there, engine's low. When I pop it in neutral, I just need a little rev. Engine low, just need a little rev. Okay, I'll just go up a couple of gears and then demonstrate the other, other way of going down the gears. Okay, so now this time I'm going down the gears, but I'm going to keep the RPMs up high. So I've got the RPMs around 1,000 there. When I give it a rev in neutral, give it a pretty good size rev. Now even if I've got the RPMs higher, like at 1,500 right there, I can go down a gear, but I just need a really big rev to match it. So the truck speed and the rev in neutral need to match. So if you've got your engine down low like this, you just do a little rev. If you've got your engine up high, you need a really big rev. So if you're a beginner, what I'd recommend doing, rather than having your revs all over the place, try and find something consistent. So every time you go down a gear, you slow the truck down at the same point, so it sounds the same, and your taco can be at that same point as well. Give it the same rev all the time, and down again. It makes it easier rather than having the revs all over the place. Okay, one important thing about uh, changing gears with a Road Ranger is because the clutch has a, a clutch brake when you push the clutch all the way to the floor, halfway out or somewhere halfway out is about that friction point. When you double the clutch, you only need to get it past that friction point. So you don't need to be going full clutch, full clutch for every gear change. So what you want to get in the habit of doing is when you change your gears, half a clutch, half a clutch. It's all you need for you with, when you uh, double the clutch with the road range of gearbox. So half a clutch, half a clutch. Okay, going down the gears, pop it in neutral, give it a rev, pop it into gear. Okay, what I'm going to demonstrate now is going up the gears without using the clutch. Uh, now, a lot of truck drivers do this, uh, but the manufacturer says you should use the clutch, so that's the method that we teach at Ian Watson's, and it's also the method you've got to use if you want to pass the test in, in, in Australia, a department of one of the transport departments. Um, but the technique is basically, uh, it's very important to release the gear at the right time. Now, at the right time, what I mean by that is, when you're building the pressure up, building the speed up, building the speed up, as you release the accelerator, that's when the gear drops out. And you just gotta pull the next one in. So if you keep a bit of pressure on, you build up with the accelerator, it will release, and then you can just push that next gear in on time. So hold the pressure, it'll take a bit of slack out of the gear stick. As you release the accelerator, she drops, whoops. Drops into neutral, drops into gear. Pressure around the gear stick, and it just should just pop to neutral, pop to gear. Okay, when you want to go down the gears, uh, to release it to neutral, we also need that little bit of accelerator release. So as you release the accelerator, it's popped to neutral. I then give it the rev, and then pull it into gear. So to release to neutral, I need a little bit of accelerator there. As I release to neutral, 
as I release the accelerator, she pops to neutral, then I give it a rev, and then pops into gear. So that's without using the clutch, also known as uh, floating the gears. Um, up the gears is pop to neutral, pop to gear. The timing is the most important thing. Being able to get that significant out of gear, into gear, she'll just drop into gear, no worries. If you go too slow or too fast, it'll grind and grumble. So it's about getting the right timing that, that suits that truck. Okay, going down the gears, release to neutral, give it a rev, and into gear. There's a bit of a grumble there. The reason is I was trying to poke the gear in a little bit too early. What these trucks like best is when you give it the rev, rev, then it's a gear stick. So it's a rev and the gear stick, not rev and gear at the same time. One other important thing is if you're using the clutch to go down the gears, it's really, really important that when you do the downshift, once you get it to neutral and you give it the rev, you've got to be off the clutch. If your foot's on the clutch and you're revving it, it has no effect. So when you're going down the gears, clutch to neutral, off the clutch, rev, clutch it into gear. so many gears you're driving around taking the corner whatever it might be going through an intersection and you forget which gear you're in if that's ever the case don't panic it's completely normal first of all you want to work out which gear you're uh, whether you're at the front of the gear pattern or the back of the pattern if you can work out whether you're at the front or the back of the pattern you then want to also check the range selector to see whether you're in the high range or low range so once you've established which range you're in whether you're at the front or the back of the gear you can then work out what speed you're in uh, our gear you're in based on the speed. So at the moment, I'm at the front of the pattern. My lever's up, so I've got two gears to choose from. I could be in fifth and I could be in seventh. Seventh gear is what we do 60, 70, 80 in, and I'm doing 20 kilometers at an hour at the moment, so therefore I must be in fifth. So that's one, uh, yeah, one of the ways of how to work out which gear you're in when you forget which gear you're in. Okay, when you come into a stop in a truck with a road ranger gearbox, uh, people who driven cars, they tend to like to stop, pop it to neutral and pop it into gear while they're coming to a stop. That doesn't work with these gearboxes. What you wanna do is keep it in gear till you're completely stationary. Once you're stationary, you can then pop it out of gear and into gear, I'll demonstrate that. So I'm in gear at the moment, I'm coming to a stop. I leave it in gear. Uh, my foot's on the clutch, but I'm not engaging the clutch brake. So it's just about an inch, two inches off the floor. I can then pop it out and into gear and I take off again. The easiest way, that's what these gearboxes like. Keep it in gear till you're completely stationary. Once you're stationary, pop it in neutral, pop it in take off gear and you can go again. This is what uh, car drivers tend to do. They're coming to a stop, they're rolling, they put it into gear, put it into neutral, and then try and get it into the gear while it's rolling. Uh, can't work now. <laughs> it's not supposed to. 